Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in this video, we're going to talk about doing selective color correction or secondaries right in your timeline. And I'm going to talk about doing it for people that don't have a ton of experience with color and how you could use quick and easy presets like our own Color Retooled and really have a lot of power to do color correction right in the timeline without knowing all that much about color in general. So I have a simple timeline laid out here, and it's just four clips, and I'll play it down. And overall, you'll notice these are pretty nice clips, but they all have their own individual problems or things that could be made better about them. So let's talk through it, and we'll just talk about how you could use these techniques on your own footage just to make your clips look a little bit better and do it really quickly. So if I take a look at the first clip, it's a time lapse, and you'll notice that it's at 2300%. So I've already speed changed it to make it quicker. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you guys to do when you're doing color correction in the timeline is to enable looping. So you could hit this button right here in your program monitor, but if you don't have that, you could hit plus on the button editor and drag it in right there. Or with the program monitor selected, you could just hit command L, which will activate looping. Then the next thing you need to do is hit X while your mouse is moused over your clip and your track with your clip on it is active. So now that I have an in and out there, when I hit play, it will just loop that clip. So looking at this clip, I think it looks pretty nice overall, but I just want to do a few simple things to it. So I think it could use some more contrast. It's a little bit flat, and I don't care if I lose some of these trees in here. I think there's not much detail in those anyway. So let's go over to my brightness and contrast looks in Color Retooled. And I'm just going to select the high contrast effect. So with my clip selected, I could just double click on the effect. And if I hit play, you'll notice it's up the contrast overall. And I'm liking that a lot better. Now, the other thing I might want to do here is bring out some of the colors in the sky. So I'm actually going to go down to a tint, which if you add it on its own, it gives a bit of an Instagram sort of look. But that's not what I'm going for. So if I double click on it, you'll notice it has this look with cool shadows and warm highlights, which is exactly what the effect is called. But I don't want that to apply to my scene overall. I'm actually just looking to apply that to the sky. So I could go up to my effects control and just select that effect. And I'm going to just come over here and select the new free draw bezier. I'm just going to select my program monitor and zoom out a little so I make sure I'm seeing all the edges. And I'm just going to start drawing. I'm going to be kind of loose about this here because I'm going to wind up feathering this mask anyway. So take a look. If I just do a few quick bezier points here, I get a nice mass shaped for my scene. And you'll notice now that my effect is being only applied to my sky. But I also want to feather this out. So I could drag out this handle right here. And if I drag on this little square right here, you'll notice I get a mask expansion. Now if I want to expand it, I could drag that way. But I actually want to contract it a little. So I could actually do negative expansion with this handle too. And I'm just going to kind of fade in that effect right over there. So if I click off, change it back to fit, and play my scene, you'll notice that effect has only been applied to my sky, and it's nice and faded in. So I get those warm clouds, sunny highlights, and then get the coolness in the darker clouds here. So that was pretty easy, but let's go to a clip that's a little more complicated, one that has some motion. If I mouse over my second clip, I hit X to mark it, and I play it down. You'll notice the first really distracting part of this clip is the handheld camera motion. Now, I don't mind having a little bit of motion overall, but it's shaky and it's distracting. So I'm just going to do a search in my effects box here for warp stabilizer. Drag that onto my clip, and while that's analyzing, let's take a look at what this clip might need. Now, I think overall it's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to want to darken it and I want to bring out the colors overall. So let's take a look again at the color retooled effects while Warp Stabilizer is still analyzing. So I'm going to come over here to Brightness and Contrast and I want to make this clip darker overall. So let's drag a darker 20% on there and there you'll notice Warp Stabilizer is finished. So let's see how those two things together look. Yeah, and the Warp Stabilizer has done a really nice job. It's just kind of smoothed out that camera motion, so there's still a nice pan to the shot, but it looks more like it was shot on a tripod. And let's see what the darkness has done. Yeah, and that's nice overall. So I'm going to leave that, but I also want to bring out some of the blue in the sky. 
So I'm gonna go down to tints and apply getting cooler. And I'll drag that to my clip here. But I don't want the whole clip overall to get cooler. I just want the sky to get cooler. Now this is an interesting clip because if you watch it, there's this panning motion. And I wanna make sure I accommodate the shape of the sky throughout the shot. So I might have to do some keyframing here. I'm gonna come back to my timeline and go to the beginning of my clip. And I'm also gonna click on my program monitor and hit command and minus just to zoom out. Now that may be a custom shortcut I set up. So if that's not your shortcut, you might have to set that one up as well. If I click on my Lumetri getting cooler and select my free draw Bezier, I'm just gonna draw again a rough shape around the sky. But this time I need to make sure that I leave a bunch of room on the sides to accommodate my pan. So let's just draw this rough shape. And of course you could be way more detailed than I'm being right now, but I think I'm gonna feather it out anyway. So it should be all right. So you'll notice if I zoom way out, I'm just leaving a ton of room on both sides for any motion in the shot. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna feather this out just to smooth it out. If I zoom back in, I'm just gonna click on fit right here and click off of my mask. You'll see the effect of that mask. It's just bringing out the blues in my sky. But now I need to track it in. So I'm gonna select it and I'm at the very beginning of the clip so I'm just gonna hit track selected mask forward. You'll notice it's doing a pretty good job of sticking to the scene. Again, there's not a ton for the tracker to lock on because this is just a pretty empty sky here, but it's doing fine with the overall shape of the scene and the buildings. And if I need to manually keyframe it at all, I certainly could stop the tracking and fix the shape. All right, so that's finished tracking. I just wanna zoom back out again just to show you how that track worked with my mask. And you'll notice because I had all that extra room on the sides, I didn't have to worry about my mask going off screen. And I have a nice track there. I think that looks good. I'm just gonna add a little vignette to the scene overall. So if I come down to vignettes, I'm gonna do a vignette oval. Let's try 40% on there. I think that's a little too much. Let's try 20%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So again, if I hit fit, the vignette is just helping to bring in some of your attention to the center of the screen. If I show you before that vignette. And I could also show you before anything, this is where we started. And with all those effects, this is where we wound up. So obviously a big improvement there pretty quickly. Let's take a look at the third clip. Here this is a bit of an overcast day, so I want to give a little help to it. I also want to make these clouds a little bit more dramatic because there's a lot of cool detail in there. So I want to help to bring that out. And of course there's a bunch of motion in this shot again. So if I select this clip, let's talk about the effects we want to try here. I'm going to go over to brightness and contrast, and I'm going to try contrast heavy. I think that's cool on the sky actually, but obviously on the foreground it's not working. So let's do what we've done in the other shots. And I'm gonna zoom out just to leave room for my camera move. I'm gonna take a look at what the camera does just so I know how to set up my mask. So I'm gonna draw a mask on my contrast heavy. And again, I could be a little bit rough about this because I will feather it in. And this time I know the way my camera pans, so I'm gonna leave a ton of extra room to the right side here. So just in case, I clearly don't need as much room as I'm giving myself, but might as well give myself more space. And again, I'm gonna do a nice feather out on that mask, and I'm gonna do a negative expansion just to bring that line up a little. So if I look at that again in kind of a still form, you can see before and after on that effect. So let's start tracking it and come back to the first frame, which is where I created my mask and hit play. It's important that you track it from the frame that you created your mask at. Now I do notice a little bit of an issue where I'm covering a little bit too many of these trees. 
So let's come up here, go back to the beginning of my shot, and I'm gonna hit tilde to make this full screen so I can see those keyframes. And I'm actually gonna delete all those keyframes and adjust the shape of my mask so I can retrack it. So I'm gonna zoom out a little in my program monitor and I'm gonna bring this line higher so it doesn't intersect my trees later on in the shot. And maybe that was a little too high. Let me bring that one back down and bring this one up just a hair to continue that line. So let's see what that does. If I hit track forward, and if I see a problem starting to form, I could always hit stop on this track and change the mass shape. No, but that's seeming pretty good. And it's fine because I have a feather there, so I think it'll blend in nicely. So let's see what I did. Again, I'm gonna fit it to the screen. I'm gonna deselect. And yeah, that looks nice. Now there's a bit of exposure shift in the original clip, which I'm not really gonna deal with right now, but obviously if your camera settings were locked down, you wouldn't have that issue. I'm also gonna to try to make the foreground feel just a little bit warmer and bring out some brightness there. So I'm gonna put a brighter 30% on the clip, but this time I want it just on the foreground, not on the sky. So instead of having to do that tracking process again for the foreground, I'm gonna select my mask and hit copy and then come down here to this and hit paste, but this time I want the inverse. So now if I look at this effect, it's only applying to the foreground and I don't even have to retrack it. I have all those keyframes already in there. And let's do the same thing with one more effect just to warm it up a little. So I'll come over to tints. So this time I wanna just make it a little warmer. So let's try the getting warmer effect. And that's nice. So let me just copy the mask again and paste that in. And this time it's already set to inverse and let's play that down yeah i think that's pretty nice i think the warmth is a little bit too warm overall but since i have this mask on here i could actually just control the opacity using the mask opacity so i could dial it all the way from nothing back to 100 percent i'm going to stick with somewhere around 60 percent just to give it a little bit of warmth but not as much as it originally started with now one more example, let's take a look at the last clip. And this clip I have this cool old tower and I should probably stabilize this one as well. But for the sake of time, I just wanna talk about what I want to show better in this scene or what the subject of it is. And in this case, it's this tower here. But I think the tower itself is a little dark. So let's select that clip and let's go to brighten it up. Under brightness and contrast, I'm just gonna select brighter 30 because it's pretty dark. And I like that on the tower, but it's making the sky a little too bright. So I'm gonna draw a mask, and this time, because I can see the top of the tower here, and I couldn't at the beginning of the shot, I'm gonna draw the mask right in the middle of the scene. So if I select the program monitor and I zoom out, I'm gonna make sure to leave a bunch of room at the bottom of the scene when I finish drawing my mask. So again, I'm gonna be a little bit rougher than I should about this, but Again, the feather will help to cover some of that up. So I'll just complete the shape here. And again, I'm gonna leave a little bit more room at the bottom of the screen to account for the camera move. So now you'll notice it's applying just to the tower. And I could also feather it out right here in the effects control. So I'll do that. And now I'm gonna track forward, which will finish up the scene, but you'll notice if you look at my keyframes here, I only did half the scene. So I'm gonna come right back to the beginning, and this time I'm gonna track backward to finish off the camera move. And you'll notice the tower is a lot brighter than where I started. And if I show you, this is where I started, and that's where I finished. And let's take a look at how it looks a little bit bigger. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. So you'll see how you could use some of the simple effects already built into color retooled presets here just to quickly color correct your scene and specifically certain parts of your scene really easy in the Premiere Pro 2014.1 update. So if you're interested in some of the things you've seen here, you can of course purchase color retooled. We'll post a link to that below. Just click on that and you could purchase color retooled for your own work. Again, it is a group of presets for Premiere Pro as well as Speedgrade, 
where you can use it to affect both your whole scene and now parts of your scene as well. And you can easily tweak these presets if you desire in Speedgrade for more customization.